Hello everyone and welcome to another lesson on fundamentals of robotics. In this lesson you will learn about the task space and workspace for robots and you will understand their difference with the robots configuration space or the C space. If you haven't watched our previous videos uh, be sure to watch them because some of the concepts are prerequisites for this lesson. This video also has a reading version that complements it. My suggestion is to watch the video first and then go and read the reading for a deeper understanding. We saw before that the robot C space or configuration space is the space of all possible configurations of the robot. But what does task space and C space mean? If you want to learn about the task space and C space for robots, keep watching. By definition, the robot's task space is the space in which the robot's task is naturally expressed. We should only know about the task and not the robot uh, to find the task space. And it's possible that the robot cannot reach some of the configurations. For example, if the task is to control the tip of a chalk on the board, then the task space is the whole Euclidean space. It's obvious that there are some configurations on this plane that the robot cannot reach. On the other hand, the workspace of a robot is a specification of the reachable configurations of the end effector. The workspace of a robot has nothing to do with a particular task. Now let's see this with an example. Suppose a planar 2R robot arm where the lengths of the two links are not equal. We saw before that the configuration space or C space of this robot is the 2D surface of a, of a torus. Now let's see what the workspace of this robot looks like. The robot arm has two revolute joints, and the lengths of the links are not equal. As you see, the first link is longer than the second. The workspace of this robot, if we don't impose any limitations on the joint angles, meaning that both angles can be freely changed from 0 to 2 pi, can be visualized like this figure. You can see that the workspace of a 2R planar robot arm with no limits on the joint angles and with different link lengths is, a, is an annulus or a ring. And that is the area between two concentric bounding circles. The, the inner circle or the circle with the radius of L1 minus L2 is the area that the robot and the vector cannot reach. Remember? The workspace is the reachable configurations that the end effector can reach, and it doesn't concern the whole uh, configuration of the robot. What if the lengths of the two links are equal? That is, L1 is equal to L2. Then the uh, workspace of a 2R planar robot arm with no limits on the joint angles and with equal link lengths is a circular disk that you can see in this photo. If we put constraints on the joint angles, for instance, if theta 1 changes between 0 and 180 degrees and theta 2 changes between 0 and 150 degrees, then the workspace of the 2R planar robot with limitations on the joint angles will be like the shaded area shown in this figure. The shaded area shows the space that the end effector of the robot can reach. If you would like to recreate the, these results or experiment with various joint limitations, try the MATLAB code provided in the corresponding post on our website. Now let's see the C space, workspace, and task space for a 3R spherical robot wrist. Consider the spherical robot wrist with three revolute joints that make three degrees of freedom as shown in this photo. You can see that the three axes of rotation of the three revolute joints are orthogonal to each other and intersect at a point. The spherical wrist is also called the 3R orienting mechanism since the coordinate frame can achieve any orientation by rotating the joints. 
in this video, you can see a Denso 60OF robot arm, an industrial robot arm with a spherical wrist with three degrees of freedom. You can see there are three degrees of freedom. Uh, the first three degrees of freedom provide the articulation for the robot and the 3DOF joint makes it a 60OF uh, industrial robot. Look closely at the wrist motion and try to identify the three rotations that we talked in the previous photo. Because the 3DOF spherical wrist has three revolute joints, the 3D configuration space or C space can be expressed as the Cartesian product of uh, three circles or a three dimensional torus. The workspace may be defined as the 3D space of orientations of the frame as the Cartesian product of the 2D uh, surf surface of a sphere and the circle. The task space depends on the task. For example, if we define the task to be pointing a laser pointer, then rotations about the axis of the laser are not necessary and important. And the task space can be defined as the set of directions that the laser can point. Now let's see the C space, workspace, and task space for the SCARA robot. Consider the SCARA robot shown in this figure. The Ascara robot is an open chain RRRP robot with three rotational and one translational degrees of freedom. The end effector configuration can be described by four parameters determining the Cartesian position of the end effector and the orientation of the end effector in the XY plane as XYZ and Phi. The Ascara robot is usually used for tabletop pick and place tasks as you can see in this short video. The task space can be defined as, uh, for example, for the, it depends on the task, remember, for the pick and place tasks, we can define it as the Cartesian product of R3 and S1. And the workspace is the reachable point in XYZ Cartesian space since all orientations can be achieved at all reachable points. The workspace concept that we saw in the previous slides is the reachable workspace of the robot that are the configurations that the robot end effector can reach. There is another concept known as the dexterous workspace. By definition, the dexterous workspace is the set of all positions that can be reached with all possible orientations. Think about the farthest points that you can reach with your fingertips. Those points are the outer boundary of your reachable workspace. Uh, that are points you can reach with at least one orientation. However, the dexterous workspace is a subset of the reachable workspace that are points that you can reach while you are able to move your joints as usual. You can reach those points with all orientations. To summarize today's lesson, let's see some important notes about the task space and the workspace. The task space and the workspace relate to configurations of the end effector of a robot and not to the entire robot's configuration. The user can decide that some freedoms of the end effector, for example its orientation, don't need to be represented for the task space and workspace. A point in the task space or the C space can be reached by more than one robot configuration. Some points on the task space may not be reachable at all by the robot. All points in the workspace are reachable by at least one configuration of the robot. Two mechanisms with different C spaces may have the same workspace. For example, a planar 2R open chain robot with link lengths of L has the same workspace as a planar 4R open chain robot with link lengths of L divided by 2. 
The C space of the 2R robot arm is two dimensional, while the C space of the 4R planar robot is four dimensional, but they have the same workspace. Two mechanisms with the same C spaces can have different workspaces. For example, the configuration space of a 2R planar open chain robot and a 2R open chain spherical robot is the 2D surface of a torus, as we saw in the previous lessons. But the workspace of a planar 2R open chain robot is a planar disk, as we saw before, and the workspace of a spherical 2R open chain robot is the surface of a sphere. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope that you get a good understanding of the workspace and task space concepts. Be sure to connect with us on Instagram and YouTube and also visit our website to stay up to date on uh, the latest lessons on robotics and mechatronics. We'd also love to hear from you. Be sure to send us an email with your constructive feedback. I hope you have a wonderful day and goodbye.